The first point that comes out by a study of suffering in the Bible is that the different biblical authors disagree with one another. There are discrepancies. The other point that came out in this class that I taught, uh, that I realized I think maybe for the first time in a big way uh, while teaching this class, is that the Bible does not teach the point of view that many people hold today about why they're suffering. I, I would imagine that if we did a survey of all of you here tonight and asked you why is there suffering, one of the principal reasons virtually everybody would say is it's because of free will. At Rutgers, I started calling this the robot explanation. Uh, I called it the robot explanation because uh, that was the term everybody would use. It, it goes like this. If God had decided that we didn't have free will, we would all be programmed like robots. And we wouldn't be able to do anything we wanted to do. We would only do what we were programmed to do. But if we were programmed only to do good, of course, there'd be no suffering because we wouldn't hurt one another. The, the fact that we have free will shows that we are not robots and therefore uh, we can do evil to one another. We can hurt one another. We can oppress one another. We can kill one another. This is, uh, this, uh, is as, as I said, what I call the robot explanation. And uh, the Bible actually does not have the robot explanation in it, in part because there are no robots in the Bible, but in part because the Bible has other explanations for why they're suffering, the ones that I've just uh, given you a minute ago. There are, of course, hints in the Bible that people can do harm to other people. But as I studied the problem with this class at Rutgers, I came to realize that there are problems with this robot explanation. For one thing, it's an incomplete explanation that doesn't solve the problem of why they're suffering. You all will remember a tsunami that killed 300,000 people. Whose free will caused that? Or more recently, an earthquake in Haiti that killed 230,000 people. Whose free will caused that? The problem with the free will explanation is that it doesn't explain natural disasters. Moreover, I think the free will explanation is philosophically problematic for a reason that a lot of people haven't thought about. Most people I know who think that, uh, who have the explanation that it's all because of free will, uh, most people I know who advance that idea are themselves Christians. These are people who believe that when they die, they're going to go to heaven. They also believe that there will be no suffering in heaven. And so one might ask, will there be free will in heaven? If there's free will in heaven, but no suffering in heaven, that must mean that it is possible to have a world with free will, but without suffering. So why don't we have a world with free will, without suffering? Well, it obviously wasn't set up that way, but it means that the free will explanation doesn't really explain the problem. Moreover, I should say that the free will explanation doesn't resolve what I would call the theological problem of suffering. The theological problem of suffering is very simple. If God is all-powerful, he can do anything that he wants. If he's all-loving, he doesn't want people to suffer any more than you want people to suffering, and you're a, lo you're a loving person. God can do anything he wants. He doesn't want people to suffer, and yet people suffer. How does one explain that? Well, that's the problem of theodicy. Most Christians think that God intervenes in history intervenes in our lives in order to deal with suffering. God intervenes in our lives in order to deal with suffering so that when something goes wrong, we can pray about it and God will help resolve the problem. If that's the case, why doesn't God intervene more often? We all have experienced suffering in our lives, and we know of others who have. After I finished this teaching, this class at Rutgers, I experienced a lot of suffering myself, as did other people. Cancer, taking away loved ones in the prime of life, teenage suicide, birth defects, failed marriages, a friend who escaped the killing fields of Cambodia, homelessness, poverty, starvation. We all know people who have had these problems. I kept reading about issues pertaining to suffering. The Holocaust, six million Jews murdered in cold blood. Genocides in Cambodia, Bosnia, Rwanda, Darfur. A flu epidemic in 1918 that killed 30 million people 
worldwide, the flu, world poverty and starvation. I came to a point where none of the biblical answers or traditional answers were satisfying to me. Most of the Bible has one thing in common. It believes in a God who intervenes in our world. That is the basis for the uh, traditions in the Old Testament of God saving the children of Israel and making them his people. It's the basis for the belief in Jesus' cross and resurrection, that God intervened in our world for good. God's intervention is what's behind our idea that prayer works. But if God intervenes, why doesn't he? In our world, every five seconds, a child dies of starvation. Every five seconds. In our world, every minute, 25 people die from diseases from unclean water. Every hour, 300 people die of malaria. If God intervenes, why doesn't he intervene? The Holocaust, genocides, terrorist attacks, starvation, poverty, tsunamis, hurricanes, earthquakes. Eventually, the answers did not satisfy me, and I came to be unable to affirm the very basis of my Christian faith. I became an agnostic. I no longer believe in the God of the Bible.